Libyans, who once opposed Gaddafi, now regret U.S.-led regime change. On September 14, 2023, a catastrophic dam collapse and ensuing flood have brought unprecedented tragedy to Libya, claiming the lives of over 20,000 people and leaving the nation grappling with the aftermath. Once regarded as one of Africa's most promising places to live, Libya now stands as a war-torn state, with many deeming it a failed state due to its severe challenges, including crime, terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping, and ongoing armed conflict. The aftermath of American-led military interventions across the globe raises questions about who truly benefits from such actions. While military and political leaders often proclaim their missions as liberation and protection of civilians, the reality on the ground can be starkly different. Recently, Zimbabwe's The Sunday Mail, a prominent family newspaper, featured accounts of Libyans who expressed remorse over the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, even though some of them had once taken up arms against him. Mohammed, a former revolutionary fighter, admitted, Before 2011, I hated Gaddafi more than anyone. But now, life is much, much harder, and I have become his biggest fan. In 2011, the international community justified its intervention in Libya by claiming that Gaddafi was planning to commit grave atrocities against his own people. However, Subsequent analysis of statistics by Human Rights Watch cast doubt on these claims. Amnesty International also found that some allegations against Gaddafi were fabricated, revealing a complex narrative of the conflict. The UN Security Council resolution, which established a no-fly zone over Libya, did not explicitly authorize regime change. NATO representatives promised their eastern counterparts that regime change was not the objective. Instead, the resolution aimed to protect civilians from attacks, particularly in Benghazi, and excluded the deployment of foreign occupation forces. However, the implementation of the no-fly zone involved a broad military campaign against Gaddafi's forces to ensure that they could not use aircraft within Libya's airspace. This campaign led to widespread destruction, raising questions about the true intent behind the military intervention. Moreover, a Libyan rebel commander publicly acknowledged the presence of Al-Qaeda-linked jihadists among his fighters, some of whom had previously fought against U.S. troops in Iraq. These fighters later evolved into what we now know as ISIS, which gained a foothold in Libya after Gaddafi's fall. Before the NATO intervention, Libya boasted the highest standard of living in Africa with state-sponsored health care, high literacy rates, and other benefits of prosperity. However, the nation's Human Development Index rating plummeted 27 places in just one year after the intervention. According to UNICEF, two million Libyan children are now out of school. Contrary to portrayals in the media, Libya had an inclusive and progressive democracy with decision-making at the local level. Gaddafi's leadership, while controversial and marred by human rights abuses, did provide stability and governance to the Libyan people. In a disturbing revelation, it emerged that the United Kingdom had at times handed dissidents over to Gaddafi, aware that they would likely face torture. The corruption surrounding these actions extends further as former French leader Nicolas Sarkozy, who played a role in Gaddafi's demise, faced investigations for allegedly accepting 50 million euros from Gaddafi for his election campaign. In light of such questionable actions, and the chaos that followed the Libyan intervention, there are valid concerns about trusting politicians with such complex and far-reaching decisions. For those within the American political establishment who advocated for military intervention, the destruction of Libya's way of life has far-reaching consequences, even if it may seem like a game to some. As Salem, a Libyan medical student, aptly puts it, 
We thought things would be better after the revolution, but they just keep getting worse and worse. We thought things would be better after the revolution, but they just keep getting worse and worse. Far more people have been killed since 2011 than during the revolution or under 42 years of Gaddafi's rule combined. We never had these problems under Gaddafi. There was always money and electricity, and although people did not have large salaries, everything was cheap, so life was simple. Some of my friends have even taken the boat to Europe with the migrants because they feel there is no future for them here. I would like to escape this mess and study abroad, but I have been waiting a year for a new passport, and even when I do get one, it will be hard to get a visa because all the embassies left in 2014. So now I feel like a prisoner in my own country, and I have started to hate my own country.